Let's do this. It's time for Hanging with Langan. I like that she's got a big, dirty mouth that gets her in trouble. Wow. Hey, you guys, how are you? Don't you love that abruptness? Woo, stream yard, baby. Uh, you're hanging with Langan. You know the routine here. Fun, heart, smart. We talk, I, when we say we, we mean me. Uh, we talk with everyone from comics, academics, to alcoholics, and everyone in between. I have a fantastic guest for you today. Yeah, you're welcome. Liz Winstead, uh, the co-founder of The Daily Show, the co-creator of The Daily Show. I used to stalk her, not just in my mind. Uh, and I would go um, and I met her. She'll never remember. But I had a friend said, do you want to meet Liz and go down The Daily Show? And I had been a commentator at the time at Bloomberg. And all I wanted to do was work with her. That's all I wanted to do. Um, but now I get to interview her and gab with her and connect with her, which I really love. She's also the founder of Abortion Access Front. Now, that's the only nonprofit that travels the country doing comedy and providing aid and comfort. I don't know if comfort is in the form of red wine, blankets, she'll tell us. She, they go to like these independent clinics, it's really serious, that are in hostile states. So she brings her warmth, her humor, and their support and their help. But now uh, she is the co-host of a weekly YouTube series. It's called Feminist Buzzkills Live, and it is a feminist comedy talk show on, like I said, YouTube Live and podcasts everywhere. So before I bring her on, now you guys, this is a serious topic, but you know, I know I try to broach things with humor and what's funnier than abortion. I mean, why not? And that's what Liz does. So I, I think it's it's gonna be, a, I know it's gonna be a great chat because I watched the first two episodes of Feminist Buzzkills Live. It's a, it's a, you gotta check it out. It's really good, but here's a little bit of her opening from the show. Hey everybody, it's Liz here and we are at the Supreme Court where in moments, the justices are gonna be hearing arguments on the Mississippi case that could change how we access abortion in our lifetimes. It, how about the men who decided to have sex and didn't do everything in their power not to let someone break in the first place? Well, it takes two to tango, and yeah, that's that's much bull crap. Yeah, men they should have been raised up to be men. I'm like, if you're gonna do it, be a father. Yeah, or wear a condom. Yes. So, do you advocate for condoms? I don't know. I don't like. <laughs> You can't tell me that all these people don't know how to get on birth control. Everybody I knew had five abortions. I understand it. I was in it. I said, hey man, my homies took me to the doctor. It's judicial tyranny, and the government has given up its right to make these decisions here, here. for us. Here, here. Yes. Down with judicial tyranny. No. Down, with me. Down with judicial tyranny. Down with judicial tyranny. Liz Winstead, boys and girls, Liz Winstead. Oh my God, you have a bell. Uh, hello, how about two of them? How about oh my like- God, Don't go crazy, my dog's gonna start barking. That's all right, I love dogs, that's fine. I love them. Hey, you are um, the rebel. This is what I love about you. What You call yourself, um, you like to deal with people who disgust you. You like to go after people who disgust you. You said something like that on your bio, which cracked me up. Uh, you got arrested. Drag what are- it's for Phil. Say it again. I like to drag hypocrites for filth. Well, you should do that. Well, yeah. Well, you know, tell me about like being arrested. What ha- I've not been arrested. Um, so what is that like when you were arrested in DC? Do they drag you well, off? It was like white lady arrest, right? It was um, oh, simple. It, it was, it was, it's like, the, it was kind of bizarre, especially after we all have watched the insurrection. Of course, you know, that was just another day in Washington, according so- to the, politicians um so we decided that you know in you know we were just protesting and then i was like i'm just gonna we just sat in the street like we just like spontaneously sat in the middle of the street and we weren't gonna move and um that's illegal it's illegal to stop traffic and just sit in the street oh. Oh, 45 of us and there was when i tell you a hundred cops it was sort of sickening actually and I knew also, because we were at the Supreme Court, there was hundreds of anti-abortion extremists. Three of them that I saw 
right off the top of my head, I all know where I also know we're at the insurrection. So terrorists, you know, white supremacists just sitting yeah. up there protesting while we're just like defending a legal right in this country. Yeah. So they haul us to this outdoor space um, and in pens. And we were kind of like in lines that you go to the theater and they just like potted us off. Um, and we waited for a couple hours until we got booked. Um, but we didn't, they didn't paddy wagon us and they didn't drag us down. I've had that happen too. Um, and then they just like, they did a mass arrest outside near the um, intersection that we were blocking. How many times have you been arrested, in fact, Miss Winston? Hmm. <laughs> Counting um, or maybe three or four. All you know, right. there was like I think a war, anti-war thing back in a lot of a lot of years ago. Um, You're against war too? Huh? You're against war too? I you know, it just doesn't agree with me. It's like garlic. Oh, it doesn't know. sit right. You know, I think I never realized until all of this went down how absolutely pro-choice I am. And I'll tell you why I like to talk about this, because I think there are people there, there we talk about extremists, you know, and, and you see those, that crazy lady, well, everybody I know has had five abortions. All right. Well, maybe you guys have to find the birth control since you're saying well, everybody. Can I, well, in the first breath, she says to me, you can't tell me nobody here can find abortion. And then literally in the next breath, she's like, everybody I know said five abortions. I'm like, what is the judgment here? I'm unclear. Yeah. Well, you know, too, I mean, you were raised Catholic, right? Mm. I yes. was raised Catholic. So I honestly do understand the mindset of some people. I do. And, but I think it, I really do. I get their mindset. I'm not saying that I'm on board with it or not. I always thought that abortion should be a personal matter between you and your God, you and your doctor, you and yourself. But because it's become a public issue, we can't keep it that way. And I will tell you, this is interesting because a lot of people get surprised when I tell them this. I, for myself, my choice would not, if I were pregnant, to have an abortion. That would have been my choice. But I have not been gang raped at 13. Uh, my uncle didn't screw me. I don't have three kids and I'm waiting at 120. Fifth Street, as I saw at Thanksgiving with moms with two or three children waiting in line for a box with their fruits, vegetables, and bread. I I, I've always been pro-choice. I've been the hugest supporter of Planned Parenthood because I think one of the best ways, if you don't want people to have abortions, is to support places where you can get gynecological health care, where you can get your pills, where you can take care of yourself, where you can get a morning after pill. But these guys want to erase every yeah. opportunity to protect ourselves from maybe not having a family, not having children. Yeah. Well, I also want to say, too, that there's been abortions forever and there always will be. So while I'm with you, I think comprehensive sex education, access to birth control um, are all should be mandatory in our in in our lives. Um, I also think that abortions always are going to happen. And it's it's for me. um if somebody wants to have abortions, have abortions. I'm absolutely make no moral judgment because I don't find anything wrong with it. And mm -hmm. so I think that there's a big, I think that it's like oftentimes, you know, it's taken forever to even say the word in a lot of times because people have been so, um, I guess there's been the anti-abortion side of the movement has laid down, um, how we talk about it and for so long that we often even say they're talking points. And I think that mm. if we want abortion to be um, legal in this country and accessible to people who need it, we have to, as a society, understand and work towards saying it's, it's fine to say it. It's part of a menu of health healthcare decisions somebody might make in their lifetime and it's not up to me to decide whether or not it's good or bad. It's up to me to make sure that if somebody needs one, that we make sure they can get one safely and accessibly. Right? Uh, yeah, uh, a thousand percent. A thousand percent. And you know what? I this is, this is graphic, but I don't care. I had five miscarriages. I had to put one in a Tupperware 
to bring to the doctor. And dark humor, I called it Felix or Phyllis the fetus because I didn't know its gender. Mm -hmm. And um, it was at first trimester into the second, tri right at the end of the first trimester. And I think that every one of these men should have to look at this Tupperware and you tell me it's not a baby. It's not, it's not a, it wasn't a baby. As, you know, it just wasn't. And I want them to see that. Right. Because it would be shocking. I was like, oh, <laughs> what's that? But it's still, it's real. Yeah. And I, you know, and that's exactly right. And like, and now, you know, we're, like when we talk about this Texas law, and I don't know how many of your viewers like have been paying attention, but uh, know, they have. There's they have. Law that we all know where there's like a six week abortion ban that's been struck down in 12 other states and mm -hmm. this bounty hunting thing. But, um, you know, the thing about, about what's going on is so physicians who provide miscarriage care in Texas. Uh, are afraid to help patients because they could be prosecuted by one of these bounty hunters for saying they're aiding an abortion. Like, and it's so it's been very intense, you know, the, the, the snowball effect of the kind of the chilling effect of, of what these laws are doing. And now people are being prosecuted for having a miscarriage. If, if you were having a miscarriage, let's say, and you were in a community and you were low income person, and the only place that you could go get help was a Planned Parenthood or an independent provider. In if you were in Texas and you went in, people would be scared to see you because of this law. And if you're, if we're in the business of prosecuting people who have miscarriages, allowing them to possibly have sepsis and all this other shit, like yeah. that's, that's the road we're heading down is, is it's not about saving babies or caring about anything. It's literally about patriarchy and controlling people and dehumanizing women and, and people who get pregnant. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And what do you we, mean about the miscarriages, Liz? What, what do you mean that they can prosecute people if they're having a miscarriage? Well, in Texas, because of this law, how the law works is if somebody suspects that you are providing abortion or aiding someone to get an abortion, you can just charge, sue them and bring them to court. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, that I knew. I, I guess what you're saying then is like, if they follow you to a, a clinic, they can just assume that's what's happening. They can happening. make an assumption. And I don't know if people know this. If they bring some false claim against you and take you all the way to court and you got to get a lawyer and you prove that they're total garbage, you can't get restitution for your legal fees. You're on the hook for them. And you know what they just passed too? Um, that's mind boggling to me that at seven weeks, you can't get a medical abortion. Yeah. What is yeah. that? For? That's getting medicine, two pills, I think like a day apart and up to seven weeks. I and you can't, you, they're controlling that. So everything you do. Says you can use medication abortion up until 10 weeks here too. And so to just lower it, because yes. And the thing is, Mo, that's so crazy is these are backup laws. So Texas knows that the Supreme Court is, they, I mean, the state of Texas today, um, the state courts today in Texas ruled this terrible law unconstitutional. We're waiting. Tomorrow might be the day that the Supreme Court rules on the Texas law. We think they're going to strike it down, not because of the abortion piece, which is wholly unconstitutional, because Roe v. Wade says you can have an abortion up to viability, which is 24 weeks. Um, they didn't even mention any part of the that clear mess. It was all about the bounty hunting, deputizing other people to have your laws and stuff like that. But they put this seven week ban in place because they knew the six week ban was going to get thrown out by the courts so that they could have this seven week ban in place. So it's not a victory um, if, the, if the Supreme Court rules against it because they have this seven-week ban in place and they're now going to have to go back to the courts to say, is this unconstitutional? And in Alabama uh, this week, they also um, did a complete duplicate of the Texas law and proposed that and the governor said that they were going to sign it. So, you know.
It's I didn't know that, Liz. This is why we need Liz Winstead, who is now. Yeah. Well, this is why we're doing the show once a week, you know, so you can like kind of get hip to what's happening. And maybe so often we hear about stuff when it's all of a sudden like at the Supreme Court, right? So why not do a show where you can have fun and conversations, but also if something gets proposed, you can get people activated to like say hell no and stop it before it goes through this whole trash system. When I, I the anger I have been feeling viscerally since this Texas thing, even prior to that, but the Texas thing, when this happened in Texas, I felt like I was reading about something that would happen in a, uh, somewhere in the Middle East where they would follow women around and make sure they didn't get their abortions or their birth control. And the anger and rage I feel about walls just coming in on people until there is nothing for them. It's just this, I call it an emotional, it's a shroud. It's a, it's our type of burqa. Mm -hmm. And um, it's sickening to me that a, a woman in Texas is forced. A teenage girl would be forced. And even if it's not a rape or a gang rape or an incest, what if a woman just doesn't want to be pregnant? Well, and that's the whole thing. And I think that we like conversations we never have, right? Is there is this abortion adoption correlation that people make all the time as though somebody owes somebody else a baby, right? To me, God, adoption so isn't the answer to abortion. Adoption is the answer to somebody who doesn't want a parent. So you carry the child, you don't want a parent, you give it up for adoption. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's your morality, right? Abortion right. is right. the alternative to somebody who doesn't want to be pregnant. And not wanting to be pregnant should be enough of a reason um, to be able to access abortion. And so... You know, it's, it's to me, like, I think um, I've heard, I've heard people, you know, sort of make these comparatives to um, like um, extremism in other countries and things like that. And, and that narrative. And, and for me, I think it's important to name our own extremism. This is Christian extremism in the United States and it exists mm -hmm. um, and the ties to uh, white nationalism are real, especially in the virulent anti-abortion movement. We, through Abortion Access Front, which is my organization that puts on this cool show, um, the other thing that we do a couple of things, um, stuff that you mentioned, we also, through our work traveling around the country and, um, you know, we do shows and then we have the uh, providers and the activists in those communities come on our shows, talk about what they need in the community, talk about what's going on. And then, our audience can sign up right there to be clinic escorts, um, help keep mm -hmm. morale and do stuff. And then we also like fix up the clinics. That's part of our work. Like we do everything you said, like bring wine and like um, massage chairs and things like that. But we also do work like yard work, fix fences, paint, because a lot of times if you provide abortion in these hostile states, you can't get a contractor or a landscaper to come to your oh. clinic because you provide abortion. So we can do some like one-off maintenance. And then what we do at our shows is say, this clinic needs a person to come and do this. And it's not a volunteer. They just want to pay somebody to come and do it. And I'll never forget being in Oklahoma. And this guy, we're talking, and this man is raising his hand in the show as we're having this conversation with the providers. And I said, do you want to ask me something? And he said, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're telling me I'm a landscaper. If I take on this client, I get a client, I get paid and that's activism. And I, <laughs> yes, it is because you saying, I'm glad these people are in my community. I'm going to park my van in front of their clinic and mow their lawn. You have, given them a voice, you've given them credibility and you've helped them out and you've gotten paid doing it. Isn't activism dope? It takes many forms and yeah. that's one of them. And you know, it's like a big light bulb moment for people when they don't realize that um, just showing up and saying that you support the clinic in your town, whether that's a Planned Parenthood, whether that's a community clinic that's independent, um, crucial to just 
you know, be present and be, um, and so like, you know, that's why we went to the Supreme Court to show this, this side of the movement that, you know, there's a lot of people who support this and we're all here. So, you know, it's, it, oh, but anyway, you get to my point. So we do that. And then the third part that we do is through this traveling around the country and meeting the local activists, they started telling us about the people outside of their clinics. And you know who I'm talking about, those people with the signs, the screamers, all of it. And mm -hmm. so we traveled from town to town and we started collecting the names of the people they talked about. And it turns out that some of the people they thought were local were from maybe another place and were traveling to harass their clinic. And so we formed a coalition of all of these small places that we had gone to that, and we started communicating and we started a database. And then we started to follow some of these people online and attend their, their virtual church services and hear them talking about a Christian call to arms and heard them plotting to go to the insurrection. And so when we watched nine, uh, the, G the January 6th event start happening, um, we were following the Facebook pages of a lot of the leadership of these places and started taking screen grabs and, video and the pulling the video from their websites. And we identified 30 people from the anti-abortion movement who were at the insurrection and turned them over to the FBI. But like, yeah, but people don't that. realize that these um, organizations really intersect, you know, like a leader mm -hmm. of one of the biggest movements, a guy named Jason Storms from Operation Rescue, Operation Save America, um, was raising money for Kyle Rittenhouse's defense, was doing, mm -hmm. yeah, was what went to Kenosha as a grown man with his gun to protect the businesses, you know? So um, it's really been interesting to see um, where these lie and just trying to get people to understand that um, they're all cut from the same cloth. And it's, it's um, very interesting, very interesting that, first of all, I don't even know how you track all these people down and do all that you do. I mean, that's amazing. Just to have your eyeballs all over the country, seeing what people are doing. And I want to ask you how you get to that. But first an aside, first I'm listening, I'm talking to Liz Winstead, you guys, and you have to check out her podcast weekly uh, live on YouTube. It's feminist buzz kills live, but then it's on all the dot coms. I'm going to put up a little, um, little screen thing I created because I'm really creative. Uh, oh, so it's you're just doing it. Look at you. Oh, Jesus. YouTube at Abortion Access Front. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Abortion Front, and TikTok at Abortion AF. Our TikTok's real fun. We have a really fun TikTok. It's an important conversation to have, and there's so many layers to this. And that's why when I go back when I said there are people who aren't extremists who can understand and get behind what you're supporting if they hear it the way you deliver it when they when it's not painted into such a crazy world where Felix and Phil, Phyllis or Felix the um fetus when they when that becomes a reality what that really is instead of what they think in their head yeah. and, and you know when I went for birth control at Planned Parenthood when you know I was younger and I remember those screaming people outside and I thought at me I could you have no idea what the hell I'm doing in here. No Maybe I don't have health insurance and I want my gynecological exam. Maybe I want birth control. Maybe I do want an abortion. But you have no idea what's going on. And in they there. don't care. I mean, in, in the in the in in mode, that is that is exactly the point that I hope people hear. They don't know, and they scream and shame you anyway because mm. they feel entitled to do so. They really don't care why you're there. They just care that they get off screaming and shaming anybody. This is what I call their school board with God. Mm -hmm. This is their little, God, look what I did, God. Look, God, aren't I a good person, God? You want to be a good person. If you're truly uh, want to help women, not help that woman who has children and can't get her a car to go to work. Yeah. Her, find her daycare. Pay for her daycare, you human piece of shit. That's what you should be doing. Then God Jesus might would hate you. you. If Jesus met you, Jesus would hate you. Jesus he would was, be like, I don't know where you got this information, but you're really a bummer. So stop. <laughs> get my name out of your mouth. Well, get my I'm, name out of your mouth. I want to show another clip. Um, 
well, first I want to show this fellow. He, this is a while ago. I used to play this on my radio show all the time to show the absurdity of some of these fellows out there. Mm -hmm. A representative of, in Georgia, his name is Terry England. But uh, here, women are compared. Well, I to, love uh, Terry England. Is he the? Was this the clip where he says that women are cows? Yeah, we're barnyard animals. Yeah, yes. barnyard animals. Yeah. I wish I had barnyard animal sounds, but I didn't have enough time to prep everything. I'm doing the best I can. Here's uh, barnyard animal man. You know, life gives us many experiences. It gives us the experience, or I've had the experience of delivering calves, dead and alive, delivering pigs, dead and alive. And I want to tell you, Representative McCall, Representative Roberts, all of us, Representative Anderson, that have done that, Representative Black, that have done that, it breaks our hearts to see those animals not make it. You know, a few years ago, I had a young man come to me at our store. And uh, it was when we were debating, talking about dog and hog hunting, I believe. And at that point, there was some language inserted in there that dealt with uh, uh, chicken fighting. And a young man called me to the side and he said, I want to tell you one thing. And y'all, this is, this is salt of the earth people I'm talking about. Someone I would have never in a hundred years expected to tell me what he told me that day. He said, Mr. Terry, I want to tell you something. You tell those folks down there when they quit killing babies, they can have every chicken I've got. Now, if that don't put it in perspective for you, real quick, your bread ain't going to rise and your eggs ain't going to cook. Did that it put it in perspective? Sure what perspective he, he was wanting me to have? I'm clear. Um, he can give all the analogies he wants unless he has given birth to a cow or a pig. Or, <laughs> and then the chicken guy just came up for inexplicable reasons i'll give you all the chickens i have mm -hmm. you should kill stop killing babies down there well i don't know here's a way you could stop killing babies get vaccinated yeah how about that wear a mask yeah you care about I don't know. Well, maybe guns in schools maybe we could do something about guns oh there's an oh gosh marine now you're just talking crazy i'm a little wacky that way but you know what i think though if they stood in front of abortion clinics with a chicken, I think that could help lure women out. They'd be, look, this is your chicken. You get a chicken. And a pot. Yeah. Maybe they, oh, that would be a bonus. Like, oh. yeah. That'd be yeah. like Christmas. Um, okay. I know that I, I said I won't keep you too long, but I do have to find, I do, I'm, I'm so fascinated by how you track all this down. And that was a question I posed to you before. Oh, so um, we... We have a whole system and people that do data tracking. My partner, Kat Green, um, who is my managing director uh, at Abortion Access Front, is a data nerd. And uh, she created, as she was collecting these names and we were talking to people, mm. she started the database and then just started collecting more names and then started some fake accounts on Facebook where she's tracking people. And... Um, and she finds out, goes to their churches, attends their things, you know, tracks everybody. Um, we have several people who have fake accounts who are like infiltrating the movement. And then um, we watch wow. them plot what they're doing. And then we can give clinics a heads up if, they, if they're planning on doing like an assault on the clinic with a bunch of people. We can give them a heads up that day um, and that kind of thing. And so we have a whole like, you know, crew of people um, led by cat. And, and we have like, you know, people who do database mining and our website gets attacked. When I tell you it gets attacked, um, like a hundred million times a month or something like that. And those are little attack. Like that's not a lot. It happens a lot, but you, you just set up for it. But like these crazy bot attacks and then, um, you know, it's, it's wild, but somebody has got to do it so that we can report them and keep, keep the clinics, um, in the know about who's yes. personalizing, you know, these 
prayer vigils. I don't know anybody who has asked to be have prayer vigils without their consent, or they call it sidewalk counseling. And I was like, you know what? Nobody gets v- side counseling on spec on their way to abortion <laughs> with bloody fetus signs. That's not counseling, but you can try to call it counseling, but it's not counseling. It's not? Mm, turns out not. Oh, I thought it was counseling. Oh. Not even if you just call oh, I just thought it was. Yeah. Not even when you call it counseling. You know, Liz, I love and respect the hard work that you are doing and the fact that you're doing these covert operations because you're protecting women. You're protecting women. We're trying. That's what you're doing. You're protecting women. Do you have two more minutes so I can play this crazy clip of the preacher? Oh my God, the preacher. Yes. Okay. Feminist, feminist buzz kills live is uh, Liz's show. And um, you have to YouTube, subscribe. We drop Thursdays at 4 p.m. Go subscribe. It's a lot of fun. Subscribe. Cool Let's play the preacher. This is an uh, excerpt from her, uh, one of the episodes. <laughs> it's insane. We want to pretend abortion is a woman's issue. It is not a woman's issue. It is a man's issue issue. Pray tell. Why is that so? Because the one that God has ordained to protect and provide for women and children are men. Do you understand what abortion does to manhood? I'm so frightened. (laughs) I am Rusty Thomas from Waco, Texas. Oh my God. Abortion is a man's issue. Because they were give, told by God that they need to protect the, us. You know, that's the whole thing. These men are protecting us from ourselves. There was a time mm-hmm. when women, before these medical doctors, and they took the power away, and women weren't allowed to get licensed to be doctors. We helped each other. We helped each other. All the, I mean, up until the turn of the century, mm-hmm. abortions were done by midwives um, and and, like, you know, we were just amongst ourselves and we would do menstrual extractions and we didn't need doctors until the medical community just horned in on, on things saying doctors need to do this for some reason. Um, you know, it all of a sudden became about doctors and, you know, and men just, God, they just, you know, shutting up is free. <laughs> is a, my public service announcement. Shutting be- up is free. Well, it really- I also want to say too, like to the good men out there who are like, you know, this has been an issue that I've never known how to advocate with and or for, because it's just always been men trying to control it. How can I be an ally? I say to you um, a few things. One, recognize that you're probably successful because of partners who paid for birth control that you didn't have to pay for or maybe because of an abortion that allowed both of you to continue with your growth and your development and your career path until you were ready to family or, or you were with a sexual partner that wasn't somebody that you wanted to have kids with eventually, you know, and that should be reason enough for you to be like, you know what? I got to be on board with this. I got to give some money, but also like we need pack mules in our fight. You know, we need strong, Men who can hold those signs for us so we can be out there giving the messaging. When you look at anti-abortion people, those men will stand there all day with those creepy fetus signs and they're screaming all, you know, we could use some people holding good signs so that we're, we're putting the message out, you know, being silent and being helpful is always really great. So come and be the voiceless supporter of the movement. And if you happen to be one of those, uh, very successful dudes uh, who doesn't have the time, show the money. That's money. We the are money. a nonprofit. It's tax deductible. It's the end of the year. Thinking about year in giving, thinking that this Texas shit is garbage, want to give to an organization that's working tirelessly to make sure that like we can stop fighting this one day possibly. Um, aafront.org slash donate. You got it. That's our website, aafront.org. Hit that donate button. Boop, boop, pew, 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 pew. There it is, you guys. Oh, my God. You are too much. Oh, it's aafront.org, though. Hold on. Maureen Langan will edit live on air. What is it? 
aafront.org live on air editing is happening folks this is the new way of the future just doing everything yourself on the streaming on the internet and doing a great job doing it so this is what it is it's aafront.org yes donate Look at you. but follow the show too um before that you go texas what's going to happen so Supreme I, Court, what, Mississippi. So I think the Supreme Court will strike down this Texas vigilante law that we've heard about. But um, don't let that be some kind of victory because I think that there's a Mississippi case that the, that the Supreme Court heard um, last week. That's yeah. a 15-week abortion ban. And I think they're going to try to uphold that. And if they do... That means that Roe v. Wade is no longer the law of the land. And that means that the decision of how abortion will be accessible will go to the states. And just so folks know, like where we're at, um, 12 states already have on the books that if the Supreme Court rules in favor of Mississippi, they will outlaw abortion flat out, no more abortions in that state. There is another 12 states that have laws um, that are pending that they will go ahead and enact once that happens. Um, and then two, two other states that could um, really be on the fence. So we're talking about 26 states that could curb abortion dramatically or end it outright, um, leaving roughly, you know, 70 million people of reproductive age without access to birth control, I mean, or without access to abortion, um, anywhere near them. And that's pretty scary. Well, birth control is only a matter of time. They're, birth they're control is a matter of time. And also, they're even trying to classify IUDs and the morning after pill as an abortion. Mm -hmm. And it's like, stop saying that. You know, pregnancy does have like a process, you know. And so the IUD stops implantation and the morning after pill also stops, um, you know, you from getting the egg fertilized in the first place. So shut your pie holes, everybody. You mentioned menstrual extractions for birth control, uh, for abortion before the, around the turn of the century. Uh, what the hell is that? I never heard of that. So it's basically, um, <laughs> it is. yeah, it's basically, um, it's basically doing, um, what you do in an early abortion, which is, you know, suctioning out cleaning out the uterus it's like a dnc ah, which i've um, had yes, yes. yeah and that's what an abortion is is a dnc an early abortion is a dnc there's absolutely no difference in the procedure it is the same thing and, this, and you folks who don't know this um if you keep the baby uh the the dying fetus in you or even if it at this point is beyond um when it's viable um if it starts to die in the woman's body and you do not remove it and you let it wait until it's still born naturally like a pig or a chicken or a goat you will die of sepsis just so you know women die because poison goes into their just so you know just and then they're going to start doing their self abortions like they did before birth control like my good friend who's a comic who's writing a memoir about them, losing her mother watching her die on the couch because she tried to give herself an abortion and leaving three kids without a mom so you have to humanize the people behind the word and the people walking into those uh clinics you have to humanize them not dehumanize them yeah. they're not a sign and a scorecard for you with god and then you're gonna right they're not god's scorecard because um it ain't it ain't your relationship with God. You worry about your relationship with God. You don't, you don't need to be policing somebody else's relationship with God. You know, just support these women, help them make, why, why would you, and then when they do get birth and then they need maybe uh, some support from the government, they're living off the system. And then when their kids can't, they can't afford to get educated and the cycle of poverty, maybe that keeps going. All right. So I'm going to go out on this clip from uh, Liz's show, Feminist Buzzkills Live on YouTube and all podcast platforms. Please subscribe on YouTube. That's right. That's the Abortion Access Front YouTube channel. Boom. Yes. She does it all. You, I'm just so impressed with the work you're doing to help. To I'm help trying. You. you know what? I'm trying. It makes me, yeah. I, I get up every day. I want to see if I can try to do a little something. Well, I think we all have to um, get women elected 
who get what all this is about. We're 51% of the population. What is wrong with us? Why do we, we also support the patriarchy. I know white women are just, they have been the worst. You know, they keep voting against their own interests over and over again because the patriarchy can benefit them. You know, white supremacy can benefit white women. And like, you know, bucking up against a lot of that stuff, you kind of got to be like, no more. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to sit in my discomfort if somebody else can be a little more comfortable. So the guys that you found or the people you found in these churches or these, um, the crazy anti-abortionists going to uh, the clinics, you also map them at the rally on January 6th and you turn them into the authorities. Yes. And if you want to know more, here's a fun website. Here's another project that we have. It's called hypocritesunmasked.com. And if you go to that website, what we're doing on that website is it's a, it's a sort of hub to have you learn about these intersections and these extremists and understanding like the different factions and how they operate because um, the, the Catholic anti-abortion people have their own messiness but they're different than the evangelical people. They have different tactics. They are regionally different. So if you go to hypocritesunmasked.com, you can see and, and learn about all these different kinds of organizations and who I'm talking about and where they are. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Hypocritesunmasked.com. All right. And I'm going to go out on this clip. I'm, I'm going to thank you so much for being here. Thanks You're, for having me, Mo. You know, you have to watch the show, you guys, because... It's smart. It's informative. You have co-hosts. She does these really great daily show packages, type packages. Um, and <laughs> just, I'm going to go out on one here. And it's called, you do a, like a cop show, a spoof of a cop show. And this is called, I believe, Personhood Cops. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna um, we're gonna go out on that, you guys, and hanging with Lang, and you know where to go with all of that. It's on uh, it's follow me on the Hanging with Lang Facebook group, YouTube, but it's on the Apple, the Spotify, all of that. Follow there. Go to MaureenLangan.com, and you'll see my gigs. I'll see. Oh, I will see you guys in Connecticut on New Year's Eve. But Liz will see you. Yes, I will be in Minneapolis. On New Year's Eve, three shows at the end of the year at the Cedar Cultural Center, which I'm super excited about. And my, I do every year a big year in review show called Bang the Dumb Slowly. This year it's called Bang the Dumb Slowly. It's the comedic purge of 2021. A lot of fun. Clips, um, graphics, um, sound bites. Uh, just if you feel like you want to get rid of 2021 hard and laugh your way out, um, it's a great show. If you're in the Twin Cities, come see me. All right, guys, we're going to go out on person. This is a clip from the personhood uh, cops. Cops is filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. Yep, we got a tip on an ejaculation without a condom over on Smith, which means it's a possible personhood violation. Wouldn't be safe for me to go it alone, so I call for backup. Personhood violation, what is that? Well, now that the law is life begins at conception, from the second that sperm touches that egg, it's got the same constitutional rights as you or me. It's my job to defend it. <laughs> what the fuck? Relax, folks, relax, relax. Folks, if you're not doing anything wrong, there's nothing to worry about. We just want to ask you a few questions. Wrong? We just had sex. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And in this state, life begins at conception. Mm -hmm. So if uh, that's wine in those glasses, you're endangering the welfare of a child. What? Is that wine in those glasses? Yes. And you, sir? What? Yep. Exposing yourself to a minor. <laughs> Good job, kid. Thanks, Chief. Hey, hey, I am not pregnant. I have an IUD. Ma'am, you just confessed to a murder. What? What are you crazy? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. This is outrage. This is a private home. Get the hell out of here. We're going down. It's the law. We're my pants. Where the hell are my pants? You're fired. You're going to be fired. Don't say a word. I am taken. Yeah, we got him on three counts. Child endangerment, indecent exposure in the presence of a minor, and first degree murder. No, no, you cannot leave me like that. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review, and feel free to share it with a friend. Please don't go, please. I'll be back. Au revoir.